This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host this week is The Omega. Hello, hello, hello. Yes. Uh, this is like the second week since I've tried starting doing the uh, three-person... <laughs> Th the the uh, three host format, and the second week in a row that the other person that was supposed to be here uh, just couldn't make it for whatever reason. Um, I, I'm I'm pretty sure that she's just tired or busy or whatever, and that, that's fine. I don't I don't want it to come out and be like, rah, 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 but you know it's fine. It, it it really is cool. You know life happens. You know life happened to you last week. Life it's, happens every day. Yes, yes, and it happened for you last week because you went on anniversary things with the wife. Yeah, we yeah. What we decided to do is we each picked a restaurant and then took the other to that restaurant. So oh, it, was, sweet. it was fun. It was Yay. Like a good little. <laughs> oh, so so yeah. Obviously, you and I both both know uh, the latest Doctor Who. <laughs> oh God! Oh my gosh! I I <laughs> squeed and the little elderly white cat was in my lap purring and sleeping. And I went. Ee! I actually squeed, and she freaked out and like. All her claws went out, and she zoomed off my lap, and I was like, "Sorry, cat." <laughs> oh, kitty. Uh, but yeah, um, I know, I know. Uh, one of you had the uh, the idea of who Missy really is. I'm not, I'm not going to spoil it here. Well, it was. I know Zara had that was one of the many options. I I was hope I had that thought as well. I'm sure a lot of people did. But then I was also hoping, oh, maybe maybe it's this person, or maybe it could be that person. And then when she's like, who could else, who could I be? And then I was like, yeah, I know, right? And then, of course, Hagen immediately, like, started listing time lords or time ladies it could be. And I made her stop when she got into the double digits because I couldn't hear what was going on. <laughs> but, yeah. And, and one of the things that kind of threw me for a little bit was one of her lines says that you had left behind and abandoned. I'm like, and, and knowing who Missy is, I was like, when did the doctor do this? I, I, multiple times throughout old who possibly i guess but well still i mean it's like that that's how the character works they just keep coming back yeah. inexplicably from the dead but uh and anybody who's listening even though i have almost as if they it, were regenerating oh yeah because oh yeah time lord <laughs> or time lady at this point rather because pretty much yeah Oh, Lordy. But, uh, yeah, if, if it hasn't already been spoiled for you, you already know. If you don't know and you don't know what the fuck we're talking about, good. Keep it that way. Go watch the episode. You'll find out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and Becky, unfortunately, she got spoiled. I, I didn't I, – I made it a point to not spoil it for her. I just sent her the message and said, oh, my God, Doctor Who. Oh, my God. It was holy shit. And she was like, I know who Missy is. I'm like, damn it. <laughs> I didn't want to – I was trying to not spoil it for you. But, you know, I blame the rest of the well, internet for the that. The thing is that immediately after that, immediately after the episode aired, the official Doctor Who Twitter spoiled it for the rest of the like, world. Oh, God. <laughs> they were like, yep, things and stuff. Oh, no. And I, so I hit that tweet, and every single reply was something about spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, God damn it, for... for... You know, BBC, I, I, I understand they, they have a th policy about spoilers, especially for, like, you know, end-of-series stuff. But, but this is one time, it's like, yeah, that's on you guys. And when when well, I watched it, because I watched it when um, when when you guys did over there, because I, I actually can access a stream that actually streams the BBC and everything. Uh, and, and I got to watch it live along with everybody else in Britain. And holy shit. <laughs> and that's, then my tweet was like, okay. People, you know, the Doctor Who fandom is, is now about to explode. You know, and then once well, the, the thing was that um, Hawkins said, and she did have a very good point, mm -hmm. was that yeah, you know, that there's kind of juicy of them to do, but Doctor Who is presented by the BBC, which means that it is, and it's done, being paid for by the British public because mm -hmm. your TV license that you have to buy pays for the BBC. So she said, technically, it's really not all that bad that they're catering to the UK because the UK taxpayer or, you know, UK people are the ones that are paying for it. Right. And I said, OK, yeah, I, I guess I can I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, if they would have, you know, a non-spoiler policy for TV shows that 
you know that aren't paid for directly by the people. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm looking at American soap operas. No. <laughs> and American shows in general, because they're all bought out by advertisers and everything is just. Uh... See, what I want to know is, what's the statute of limitations on spoilers? Like, what's the point that you can say, okay, it's been blah 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 many years. If you don't know what happens at the end of the Sixth Sense, it's not my problem. Um, depending on what it is, if it's a movie, I would say at least three to five years. If it's a movie. Because like, if there's someone that's still getting upset because, you know, Darth Vader is Luke's father and was spoiled for them, I, it's been decades. I mean, you yeah. don't have any recourse to bitch at that point. There, uh, there are probably some people that bitch about it was about, about you know, uh, Rosebud. <laughs> you know, it was a sled. It was a spoiler. Oh, God. Uh, never mind that Citizen Kane was out before the invention of color movies. Pretty much. So, you know, just, just saying. Ugh. That's actually one movie I've never seen. I probably should see it. Me either. It's, but I, I get the general idea. Yeah. <laughs> it is basically about this asshole who I, I, I'm guessing here. About some some guy who, who lost his sled and became an asshole or something. I, I don't know. I'm pretty sure he was an asshole. Like his whole life. And he like achieved great things but at the cost of his assholery. And then he died. As he was dying he was like, oh, I remember Rosebud, my sled, my innocence. And it was secretly my innocence the whole time, or something like that. Ah. If you know, write the show. Yes, please. <laughs> oh. Love scene. Yes. God, it's, 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 for me, it, this week has been like both the longest week and the shortest week this year. I don't know how that happens. I, you know what? I blame the doctor. It's all his fault. Yes. It's all his p fault with his wibbly wobbly and timely wimely and meh. Time lording about as he does. Yes, as he does. Which I still say Peter Capaldi is definite. Oh God, he's quickly become one of my favorites. He he's got it. He's got it done. You know. Yeah, which you know it's to be expected because he's been a fan since the beginning. Yeah, like they basically he kicked the BBC like back in the day. Actually, when he was a kid, kicked him out of. Uh, he was like some kind of leadership in the fan club, mm -hmm. and they actually kicked him out because he was like too much of a fan. <laughs> That's great. I think that's great. Who's yeah. laughing now? <laughs> and I well, do... Peter Capaldi is. Yes. And I do love the reference they made with the psychic paper in, in this week's episode. Yes. Yes. Like... <laughs> I'm a government official. Why is this full of swearing? I have some anger issues. Oh, yeah. Plenty of it. <laughs> oh, but that leads us to our uh, shout outs. And unfortunately, with everything going on and being wibbly wobbly, I kind of lost mine somewhere. <gasps> yeah. No, I'm just kidding. No, but uh, but I but I understand you have one. I do. Uh, I would like to shout out to a, a performance group called Granny Turismo, and you can find them at GrannyTurismo.net, and they're also on Facebook. And in the great tradition of the British drag comedy, uh, they are buskers who are, are their grannies with uh, motorized um, shopping carts, which are played by Segway. And they go around to festivals and stuff, and they do comedy routines, and they dance, and they did Gangnam Style, and it was amazing. We were in the we were coming in the Guild Square because we'd been across the river the other day, and it was just a really windy, really cold day. It had been raining, and so we we got came through Guild Square, and there was like noises, and I was like, "What's going on?" And she said, "Oh, part of the festival because it's like the Halloween is a big thing over here," hmm. and there were just these like old drag grannies, you know on motorized shopping carts and they sang and they danced and I got some of it on um, on phone so I'm gonna I'll put it up on YouTube but yeah definitely go check them out because they are they are something Gr granny turismo granny granny turismo dot net yes okay I'll have to I'll have to check that out <laughs> Ho hopefully you know by the time this goes up the thing will be in the thing and it'll be actually spelled right because at first I thought you said granny I'm like wait what <laughs> No, there it. I I I was like, is this that pantomime thing you're talking about? And she's like, kind of. And I I became a believer. There you go. Oh, uh, and and you brought up Halloween. I understand. You know, you two went out, and I understand you two went out as basically yourselves. Yeah. Well, see, I had. I well, the thing is that I had two exams last week. I had one on Monday and I went on Friday, mm -hmm. and I had class. Um. So really, we didn't have time to prepare anything intricate. So we just went out as 
Hagen and Omega. There you go. <laughs> well, you saw the fireworks. Fireworks were amazing. The fireworks were like major city Fourth of July quality, is Sweet. what I would say. Yeah, I wanted to do a little bit something, but I kind of got a case of the Baham bugs this year because our home, you know, my hometown, Graceville, Florida. We you have... guys probably like don't say no to the devil. Don't give out no Halloween candy. I tell you what. Actually, no. The, 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 we, no? We, we didn't celebrate it on Halloween proper. You know, We did everything on the 30th in this town. We had the thing downtown. I think it was like the truck or treat or whatever. And, and you know, trick or treaters go around. Although I don't think we got very many this year considering we still have a shit ton of candy. Um, this but... is not a bad thing. Like, no, you do it's... realize it. No, it's not. <laughs> it's it is not. for you. But, um, but what gets me is it's like, okay, Halloween is on a Friday. What is the problem with Halloween being on a Friday? And yeah, I can somebody... understand if it's like a Monday or a Tuesday, you might want to do that. But yeah. Friday, that's like the best thing that could happen. Yeah, except down here, everybody likes to give the metaphorical blowjobs to football. Yeah. we po- Halloween got rescheduled because of a fucking high school football game. A high school football game? Yes! High Seriously? school football game. Was it like homecoming or something? No! Homecoming, in fact, homecoming was like our first home game a couple months ago. Oh. Well, I never know. Either. Yeah, I mean, huh. it's it's weird. It's like, what the fuck, guys? I mean, that's like that one band of relatives in my family that always makes us move holidays. So because of their driving, <laughs> so like we'll have Easter on the Saturday, you know, like yeah. Jesus rose early. <laughs> I mean, that you can understand a little bit more on a personal level, but. This is a town, you know, well, not town, but this is a city-wide thing. How big is your city? Uh, I think population-wise, it's about 3,000 people. Okay, that's, pre- that's pretty decent. So it's just big enough to be considered a city. It doesn't look like it. If you go through downtown Graceville, it is almost a ghost town. Oh. Almost. We have a couple of drug stores. I think we have a hardware store. <laughs> I thought you were going to say we have a couple of drug addicts. Well, we have, a bl- we have plenty of those, too. <laughs> like, I mean, yep, it's Florida. Yeah. Well, it, it says something about the town when one of the jokes I was working on like like years ago for a potential stand-up routine involved meth labs in the back of churches because that's two things we have in this town. We have a lot of drug houses. That's not in the churches. Bible. No, it's not in the Bible. <laughs> Jesus never said I am the one who knocks. <laughs> no. No, Jesus I might disagree. be the one who talks. I don't know, though. Mm. That'd be pretty cool. He probably would, too. Yeah. You know, like, somebody somebody send us a picture of a pot smoking Jesus. You'd be like, "Come unto me, my children, and we'll all smoke you out." Yes, it's all good. And and bonus points if it if the Jesus you send me is actually Middle Eastern, that would be bonus points. That would because that would be awesome. He wasn't Middle Eastern. He was Semitic though. Semitic. Well, yeah. still, you know, dark skin. You know, more dark skin than. Well, what yeah, it was, we he, normally was, see. he was. He was Jewish. He was Semitic. Mm-hmm. Oh. The Middle East kind of like didn't exist as a political region then. This is true. This is true. Oh, so speaking of which, let's go ahead and hit our news stories. <laughs> and oh, first, oh god, it's time for the news. Yes. <laughs> oh no, copyright infringement. Oh no. He <laughs> sued by Two the Ranting Griffin. Oh no, Two's gonna watch. Two's gonna you know pop up and be like, hey, what the fuck is she doing? That's Uh-oh. mine. <laughs> like long time listener, long time fan. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I bought one of your DVDs. Doesn't doesn't matter. Oh. I've actually bought a few of his DVDs. I have one of his DVDs, and I have one of I don't know how I came about this because two's DVD I bought, but I have a copy of one of Uncle Kage's Story Hours mm-hmm. from a con, and I don't know where I got this. So it, I, I think it might belong to somebody, but it's not mine. So I have it. So uh, if you're out there and you're missing a copy of Uncle Kage's Story Hour, uh, uh, right in the show. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but our our news now. Uh, The Christian News Network reports that Kirk Cameron is coming under fire from other evangelical priests for his claim that Halloween is a holiday that Christians should take back from the pagans. Take take back implies that it was a Christian thing to begin with. I don't think that's so. No. Uh, When you go out on Halloween and see all people dressed in costumes and see someone in a great big bobblehead Obama costume with great big ears and an Obama face. Are they honoring him or poking fun? The actor, actor asked last week. They are poking fun at him. So? So what? 
Well, fair enough. I mean, we went on Halloween night down to the chippy to get fish and chips, and we saw a little kid dressed as Osama bin Laden with a huge cigar. <laughs> Just saying. Wow. <laughs> We're like, look at that kid. And he was like, hello. Yeah. Uh, well, well, you guys are over in, over uh, across the pond anyway. Over here, holy shit, that kid would be on the news. And that... I said that. We went into the chippy, and she, she was like, oh, we had some kids. I'm like, I saw if he was in America, he'd probably get shot at. Probably. Oh. Cameron she further, thought that was real funny. Yeah. Cameron further claimed that the holiday entailed Christians dressing up in costumes as the devil, ghosts, goblins, and witches precisely to make the point that those things were defeated and overthrown by the resurrected Jesus Christ. The costumes spoke fun at the fact that the devil and other evils were publicly humiliated by Christ at his resurrection. That's what the scriptures say. I don't remember that part from the Bible either. <laughs> I don't either. And, you know, but he's no, saying, I'm imagining like Satan from the South Park movie. Oh boy, is my face red? I mean, well, it always is, but you know. <laughs> oh yeah. He encouraged his listeners to throw the biggest party on your block to show how Christians celebrate the day that death was defeated, and you can give them gospel tracts and tell the story of how every ghost, goblin, witch, and demon was trounced that day, the other day Jesus rose from the grave. Right. Well, technically, technically, Christians aren't supposed to believe in ghosts. Because you don't just hang about. You either go to heaven, hell, or purgatory, depending on if you're Catholic. Yeah. Although... Technically. That... Yeah. Although they believe in at least one ghost. Yeah, but that's the whole... It's, the... it's not really a ghost. It's the Holy Spirit. The ghost is just used as a colloquialism to, to make sense to kids. Ah, okay. At least that's what I was always taught. Yeah, fair enough. But Mike Gendron of ProclaimingTheGospel.org told Christian News Network that Cameron is gravely mistaken because the historic historically the rituals of Halloween are connected to the pagan uh, uh, pagan is in quotes by the way practices of Roman Catholicism and are therefore not constant with biblical Christianity. There's nothing to do with Catholicism. <laughs> no, it's not. It's it's a Celtic thing. No, that that goes that goes all the way back and and, and you you want to get the the it's about scaring away the evil spirits. Yeah. You know, and, and, and reveling. Well, there's, there's some also, reveling going on. There is that too, but uh, uh, oh god, I want to have like I wanted to have like this whole history of Halloween thing or whatever, but it all just kind of fell out of my head. So I am going to direct you to Scott Murray, who is the one of the who's the co-host for Lost in the Static, and he can tell you all about it because that that's that's his bag. <laughs> you know about, like, the, you know, mean, about the history there are people of Halloween and everything who are like pagans, like that's their religion, and that's cool, but. It's not like they're like up to no good, you know. They're probably like having like religious time, you know. I mean, I don't, I don't know what like pagans would do on Halloween, like have a party, I guess, yeah. drink, hey. have candy. I don't know. Kind but of like what everybody else does. Yeah, <laughs> but it's just this, this. I. It just annoys me, because I don't recall when I was a little kid this being a thing. Yeah, me neither. I mean, I just went and out. You're you're my age, right? You're you're about my age. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think so. And and so, th th do you remember this in the eighties? This was never a thing. No, I never remember a thing. I remember just going out dressed as whatever, whether it be like Super Mario or or Batman or or Superman or or one year I was dressed as an issue of Nintendo Power. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> that was one of the bulkiest costumes ever. One year I was Peter Pan, and one year I was a vampire, and one year I was a dinosaur. I was all sorts of shit. It's great. It's fucking yes. great. One year I was a frog, and my my grandma no I was, and my grandmother made me um special little frog frog flippers to wear over my shoes. Only problem is it poured buckets that year and they got soaked, but I didn't care. It was a fucking frog. Oh God. So uh, Gendron actually went on to say uh, the reason Martin Luther posted his 95 thesis on a church door on October what? 31st, 1517, was because the very next day, All Saints Day, Catholics would be coming to the church to venerate the bones and relics of dead saints. Saints in quotes here. Well, actually, that that is true. So I really yeah. can't fault him over that. Yeah. So the what are you bringing the Lutherans into it for? <laughs> the Castle Church of Wittenberg had over 1,900 relics of dead, quote-unquote, saints on display. Catholics were granted indulgences for the remission of sins if they venerated the relics and made confession of their sins. This practice of necromancy is strictly it's... forbidden by God. <laughs> it's not necromancy. <laughs> no, I don't think that means what you necromancy... think it means. Necromancy involves, like, actual spells happening. Like raising the dead. If you're raising those saints, okay, maybe you're in a bit of trouble. No, but, no, no. You but wanna, like, you want to see? I see this, 
you want, you want to see a recent example of necromancy, just watch like just watch the most recent Doctor Who. There you go. There's your necromancy. It just it, it puzzles me so much that evangelical Christians have like this big invented beef with the Catholics because they're always like hot on the dog to call the Catholics out for for wrongdoing. Mm-hmm. And I really don't understand. Like, I mean, veneration of saints, okay, it might be pretty creepy, especially the relic part, but yeah. it's not an actual magic that I know of. Me neither. I, I... You practice necromancy right the show. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> as long as that necromancy isn't, um, you know, what's happening in Doctor Who right now. You know, as long as it's not he that kind said. of... Yes. Hmm. Kirk Cameron needs to repent of his message that urges Christians to sell, to participate in this dark holiday that glorifies the devil, ghosts, goblins, and witches, he added. On October 31st, while Kirk Cameron is urging people to celebrate Halloween, our ministry will be encouraging people to remember the reformers who were brutally tortured, murdered, and burned at the stake by the Roman Catholic Church for defending the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right. Oh, bullshit. Because, because... Bullshit. You know what Halloween venerates? Snickers. There you go. Snickers. That's what Halloween Reese's. venerates. Snickers. And Twix and Eminem and Nestle Crunch, uh, you know, oh, Jesus, fuck. Yeah, it's like... Well, literally. Well, yeah. Uh, it's like, dude, okay, so, you know, Kirk Cameron, while, while I, I don't agree with his message, his message being, you know, yeah, we're mocking the devil with all of this and running around like this, we're mocking it and having fun at the devil's expense, you know, it's at least tame. It's, a, it's at least, you know... It's surprising when Kirk Cameron isn't the asshole for once. Yeah, you know, and again, like I said, I don't agree with him, but this guy right here, this well, what's his what's his name? Uh, Mike Gedrin here. Um, you're wanting everybody to remember all of the horrible tortures and murders and and immolations that a lot of these reformers went through for on Halloween. You know, no, you know, how about? But how what about... does the Reformation have to do with? I, I'm really confused. Like, did he just, like, pull Martin Luther out of a hat? I mean, you Maybe. never hear them bang on about the, the the Reformation. I just, that's like the most odd thing to suddenly get a bug up your ass about. And don't forget the, the, the Reformation, said yeah. no one ever, except maybe, like, a school teacher. But, <laughs> I just don't oh, know. What the hell? Oh, and speaking of what the hell, uh, our next one comes out of Kansas. And this is this is actually the one I had saved at the end of last show. <laughs> Philip and Sandra Unra are very clear. Same sex marriage in Kansas would violate their property rights. Ha. <laughs> The couple, who lives in the small town of Harper, southwest of Wichita, has filed a motion to intervene as defendants in an ACLU lawsuit seeking to allow same-sex marriages in the state. The couple argues in a filing prepared by Philip Unra, an attorney, that same-sex marriage would rob them of their property rights by devaluing their marriage. What are you going to what are you going to do? Sell it on eBay? <laughs> I like you know, I read this story because I have to confess to you, I actually read this story like you know through regular news blogs. You know when it when it happened. I said, like, "What? How do? Who appraises a marriage? Like, if you're really really poor, can you pawn it? I don't know. And like like and then like downgrade to like common law. Oh, you know, like what? if you're really hard up and you you can't, you know, your mortgage is due. Like, I know I love you, honey, but I think we have to pawn our marriage. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. Oh god, that would be that would be kind of, that would be both sad and maybe a little hilarious. It would. <laughs> so when I read things like this, this is of course the first thing I think. Yes. Because you know that's the first thing the justice is going to ask. What is your marriage currently valued at? Yes. A U.S. Supreme Court decision earlier this month declining to hear challenges to state same-sex marriage bans set off a chain reaction of legal maneuvering that has legalized same-sex marriage in several states, but so far not in Kansas. Uh, as of this recording, I'm not sure if that's changed. I, it's up in the air. I think they're working on it. I think they're still working on it. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I know I know that like most of the West – It's like one of the things where like marriage licenses have been granted and stuff, mm-hmm. but there's still like some state legislators that are still trying to fight it. I think is – I think. Don't quote me on that. Yeah. Let's see. The filing from UNRWA 
argues that if same-sex marriage becomes legal, the meaning of marriage will be fundamentally altered and that the couple's property rights will be taken away. In the filing, the Un UNRAs argue that their marriage should be viewed as a kind of property which would be altered by same-sex marriage. I think she's just bitter that she ended up with a last name like that. I think so. I think they're both bitter about it. I mean, I'm just saying. And just, just... The meaning of marriage will be fundamentally altered. Yeah, like, words haven't changed meanings over the years. I mean, it's like marriage. Two people love each other. They join in a union uh, of either holy or legal. A lot of times both. And and the thing is that you can use that you can actually use the term outside of the the strict definition of it, because I've heard someone say, well, I guess we could go to this takeaway, but I'm not exactly married to the idea. So if you want to go to some other place, it's fine. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and Kansas adopted a constitutional ban on same-sex marriage in 2005. Motherfuckers, the ban passed with 70% of the vote. UNRWA's filing contends that the principles of equality regarding the marriage relationship and the same-sex marriage relationship do not apply as the two relationships differ as apples and oranges. The extension of marriage to same-sex relationships inflicts, inflicts profound harm on the UNRWA's. For the courts to say that, fr that from this day forward, marriage in Kansas must be extended to a same-sex couple is and forever will be deeply disturbing to the UNRWA's and undoubtedly to those who that cared enough to pass an amendment to protect it. A departure I really from the joy and celebration says... normally associated, associated with the word marriage, the filing says. And yes, I had to do it in that voice because it is just that fucking stupid. Okay. I... Okay, okay. I really hope the judge just fucking said, well, they can fucking get over it again. <laughs> that's, that's exactly my, my thought, and that's exactly... He'll say, deal with it, and then put on a pair of sunglasses and rock it off on a rainbow because his people need him elsewhere. Or her. Absolutely. I don't know who the justice is. Yeah, and never mind the fact that, you know, you know legislating away the you know people's rights because of whatever reason whether you know skin color sexual orientation regardless of whether or not i know there are probably people out there that still think oh homosexuality is a choice it it, it shouldn't matter whether or not it's a choice you can't vote on human rights that's not how it works exactly and the fact that you're trying to do this and you're trying to push people to do this that means you're fucking bigots that's really all there is i just really want to know what their marriage is valued i want to know too yeah. Oh God. I. You know. If is anybody knows. Is there a conversion knows, rate? Like, is it worth more in in euro or something? I don't know. Just so, like, if a Canadian tries to come down and sell their marriage in the states, is it you know in Canadian dollars or U.S. dollars? Will they lose that two cents? Inquiring yes. minds. Yes, we must know this. Can you trade it on the stock market? Okay. I want to buy shares of like someone else's marriage. Hmm. Yeah, you know, we could buy another marriage. How about that? That would be awesome. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> like shareholders in someone else's marriage. Like yes. They have to consult you if they want to have a kid or something. Yes. You know what? I, I would I would so do that, especially if it earned me money. <laughs> that oh, would be such share. a bad idea, though, because you could uh, just buy shares in someone's marriage and troll them. Oh, God damn it. You, get, you, you, you were in my brain. <laughs> I was going to do that. <laughs> uh, but not, not in any horrible way or anything. Just a friendly way. Just a friendly trolling. Yes, you know I, 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 I like to troll friendly and, and, and harmlessly. Oh, and and there's even more anti-gay stuff coming out of the right wing. And, and, and Why am I not surprised? Because this is America, and, and you are, you are, you are very wise to get away from it. I'm safe in Europe where, the, where they're liberals and they eat cheese. Yes. Nom, nom, nom. Anti-gay activist Julianne Appling of Wisconsin Family Action appeared on, vo on Voice of Christian Youth America's In Focus talk show with host Jim Schneider. I bet their ago. ratings are through the roof these days. <laughs> uh, maybe. Uh, she appeared on there several weeks ago to, to discuss the implications of the recent same-sex marriage rulings across the country, including one in Wisconsin, warning viewers that a redefinition of marriage would erode America's moral compass and lead to the sanctioning and acceptance of other sexual sins. Yes, because we are going to accept, you know, because we, you know, be an accepting of other quote-unquote sexual sins. Did she name them? Does she, like, have a specific fear of blowjobs? Is it anal? I mean, you know, got to be clear and concise with this stuff. Yeah, we need to know. The nature of sexual sin is it kind of wraps its cords around you until you become completely identified by it, she explained. That's when the giving up happens. <laughs> right, because, you know... Because so many guys walk around with a t-shirt that says, I am my blowjob and my blowjob is me. 
Yeah, uh, you know, I, I wear my sexuality and, and, and all of that stuff on my sleeve by default, basically. Sometimes I go too far. I admit this that. guy's a vanity plate to say rim job. <laughs> OK, oh, I'm uh, done. Just just. But I, but there are some things that I would be into or would be interested in trying that you're not going to find out unless you look me up on Fat Life. That's just saying. You know, I well, don't... you know, Mary, we were scissoring last night, and you'll never believe what Gladys said. To... All right, now I'm gonna promise something. <laughs> I'm promising then. Oh God! Now, Continue with And now things. everybody is imagining two old women. Oh God! <laughs> they have to be old women. They could be like you know, like middle aged. You know. Okay, middle aged women. Then you well, <laughs> somebody's getting off to it. I know that. Oh. Probably uh... middle aged women. Oh. And that's when people are ripe to have their conscience seared, and they are no longer able to distinguish between right and wrong and good and bad. Really? Seared in a white wine sauce <laughs> oh, God. by the devil and then consumed with potatoes. Uh, Schneider later chimed in with a well-worn slippery slope argument claiming that same-sex marriage sets precedent for legalizing pedophilia and polygamy. Okay, number one, fuck no. Cause... Well, I think that you could have polygamy. I think that's okay. Well, no, no, no. I'm not even worried about polygamy at this point. I'm just concentrating on the pedophilia. No, because gay people are just like straight people, except they just want to screw the, 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 the people with the same parts as they have. You know, there are more there are more there are heterosexual more uh, pedophiles than there are homosexual pedophiles. I mean, I'm just saying. Like, there was exactly. a study done. Guess what? I, I, I have a relative who went to prison for a long time because he, he liked to diddle children. Jesus. And he was not gay. That That's just saying something. He might be bi. I don't know. But he's definitely not gay. Just saying. Yeah, I really, I, I really don't like that because pedophiles are different than people who are homosexual because people who are homosexual want to have sexual relations with other people of the same gender. Note, I said people, not children. Pedophiles want to have sex with children. Yeah. Well, well, to, to put it more, to put it more um, um, in line, uh, not in line, but um, to to to. Anyway, point is, we want adults. We don't want kids. You know, we you know we being you know every sexual being that wants to have sex. Although I suppose like if you're like 16, then, but yeah. then they're still your age, so I guess it doesn't work either. Yeah. I just feel bad for those kids that like. You know, sex to each other, and they're the same age, but they get slapped as uh, sexual offenders, yeah. even though they're both 16. I think that's not fair. Yeah, and, and never mind the fact that in a lot of states, the age of consent is 16. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, that, that's a whole different more thing there. Okay. And he goes on to say, once you change what, that which is unchangeable, there's no limit how far you can go, he said. Multiple partners? What about foursomes? What about an adult who says, I want to marry this underage child? It's discriminatory. I love this child. This child loves me. Why can't we not be married? That's discriminatory. The argument well, first of all, that's legally impossible because a child under a certain age cannot enter into a legal contract whatsoever. Their exactly. parents must do it for them. Yes. That's why like child actors have to have a guardian. Just saying. Yeah. The arguments they use justifying same-sex marriage are the same arguments they're going to use to justify polygamy, threesomes, and adult child <laughs> You sound <laughs> like a goat reading that. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm lost. <laughs> justify threesomes. <laughs> oh, God. Did you sounded like just then, like doing the old person voice. <laughs> <laughs> you did? Yeah. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to defend that either. <laughs> it's just, hey. Oh, God. But threesomes. Def justify threesomes. Yeah, you know, um, there was there was one guy of note in the Bible that had like a shit ton of wives. What was his name? Oh yeah, that was fucking Solomon. So he's... if you want biblical precedent for like polygamy, and he was like the smartest guy in Babylon. So yeah. yeah. So uh, you know, you know, we can. And what's his Bible. face? Uh, that one guy slept with all his daughters. A uh, lot, and basically, yes. basically, his daughters raped him. Yeah. Basically. Okay. Okay. Maybe I, I put it the wrong way. The guy that his daughters got him drunk and they all raped him. Yeah, that is Lot. <laughs> you know. Oh God. If you're Lot, write the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. I'm in the mood today. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> we we are we are taking no shit from nobody. Nope. Uh, oh. Oh. Oh God. Oh God. Ladies. Where? Ladies. This next story. I, I apologize, but only partially. <laughs> I heard about this too. 
Yes. And if you hear about this on What the Fuck is Wrong with You as well, um, you'll get to see Nash and Tara's reaction. <laughs> oh, God. A woman from Little Rock, Arkansas, is now recovering after a bizarre chain of events that led doctors to find the tongue of a deer lodged into her vagina. That's that's the end of the internet. That's, that's It's over. Close it up, guys. We're done here. Well, the, Ar- <laughs> oh, God. the Arkansas woman, whose name has not been released, went to her gynecologist complaining that her discharge had a very bad odor. Douche. Do you ever get that not so fresh feeling? Maybe it's <laughs> your tongue in your vagina, just saying. Yeah. Her doctor performed a typical exam, checking for several different issues that could have been causing this problem. All tests were negative. The doctor was not at all concerned about her complaints until the results of the pap smear came back. Well, see, here's the thing. If you took a pap smear, I understand those are, like, really uncomfortable for you ladies. You know, and... and, and... There's a thing called a scapulum or a scapula. It's something sounding horrible isn't going on. That's all I know. Yeah, but uh, point is, it's really uncomfortable, and I'm just imagining because you have from from the sounds of it, they have to take cells from like the inside, you know. So it sounds like they kind of yeah, but it, it it depends on what kind and how how deep that they go. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, but that's again, I that may be wrong. If any gynecologists are, I mean, let us know. Yeah, you know, and and bear in mind, it is just my understanding, which may not be accurate. Uh, either way, I'm thinking, okay, if they were scraping and, and, and she didn't feel anything, that would be the first sign of a problem when she doesn't scream out in bloody pain. Well, it's not, like, it's not, it's not comfortable, but they aren't trying to hurt you. They would, that'd be terrible. No, that's true. Although some women... And it's just cells. Nervous. It's like, yeah. you know how the, like, for a DNA test, they take a Q-tip and they swab the inside of your cheek? Yeah. It's like, it's like, that's how you get loose cells. You don't, like, go in with a shovel or something. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I am horrible today. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get letters. Uh, let's see. The report indicated the cells taken from the pap smear were not human, cannot determine the origin of the cells. All they knew was <laughs> that they were not human cells. Oh, my God. They found an alien. I wonder if he thought, like, I need to reconfirm this. Otherwise, I'm going to be so famous. Yeah. The doctor. She requested... got an alien vagina. Oh, shit. The doctor requested that the woman come back for a repeat exam to discuss the findings. During the exam, the doctor inserted his speculum and scooped out a large piece of loose, decaying flesh. The doctor was disturbed with what he had found. So was I. Uh, During the exam, I was utterly shocked with what I had found. Never in my 33 years of practice have I seen anything like this, Dr. Lee told the American Journal of Forensic Medicine and Pathology. When I removed from the woman... He's famous anyway. Yeah, there you go. What I removed from the woman looked like a long tongue, but certainly not a human tongue. Uh, I don't know. It could have been Gene Simmons. Then what she admitted to her husband after the exam was even more disturbing. She admitted it to the husband, not the doctor, who's probably trying to figure out. Because the first thing I would have thought, I guess, if I was a doctor is, oh, God, this is the biggest, strangest cancer I have ever seen. Yeah. The woman finally confessed to the, the dreaded details to her husband. After her husband's recent hunting trip, he brought home a deer and gutted and dressed it in their garage. She admitted to seeing the tongue, admired its length, and had snuck off with it to use as a pleasuring aid. <laughs> no! I need to vomit up everything I've no! eaten since 1983. Oh, God. She didn't remember leaving it up. Oh! How could you not remember? How do you do that? Like, okay, I can understand, you know, if it's been a long day and you're like, oh, crap, tampon. Oh, yeah, I forgot. But. No! How? <laughs> Someone else's tongue, and it's not even a human tongue. Well, like, and, and just that, it's like you, you always, you know, you, when you're a little girl, your mom always tells you, okay, be careful because you don't want to get an infection. D- d- don't, don't stick dead deer tongues up yonder. No! <laughs> No! And, and here's another thing. Another this is why we thing. need health class. This is why we need health class, I'm just saying. Yes! Here's another horrifying thing. Well, her and her husband, that woman and her husband, they had to have fucked at least once between then and the doctor's appointment. Maybe they didn't. Maybe that's why she needed a deer tongue. Maybe. I'll just... Oh, God! Oh, ah. Bambi. Yeah, Bambi, oh, Bambi, do it. Oh, my God! <laughs> Sorry. I told you, it's been a long weekend. <laughs> Oh. I'll make you forget all about your mother. All right, never mind. Oh, okay. 
Okay, this next one. What do people get up to in the south? I tell you what. I don't even. I I tend to stay in this room a lot of times. See, you notice that nowhere in the the Antiqui people say it will lead to people sticking deer tongues up their vaginas. Yeah, that. We, we, you know, that's going to be a new thing now. Uh, I'm I'm going to remember that. I'm going to use that at <laughs> some point. I know it. I know it. Uh, the next one, still weird, but not as horrifying. If Kansans can pull together, a Russell County toilet could claim the prize as America's best restroom. Last month, the Grassroots Art Center's Bowl Plaza in Lucas was, des- was selected as one of the finalists in the top 10 best restrooms in the nation. Ooh. The competition is sponsored by Sintas, a company that designs restrooms. In a contest where people could vote for their favorite restroom in the U.S., the tiny Russell County town's only public restroom quickly rose to the top. So far, the Lucas Bowl Plaza, which is shaped like a giant toilet, is second in the nation behind Longwood Gardens in Philadelphia. Hey, I like Longwood Gardens. My parents go there to take pictures of the flowers. I don't, I'll have to ask them about the restroom. There you go. The other contenders include the American Girl Place in Chicago, the fabulous Fox Theater in St. Louis, and the Tiki Lounge in Pittsburgh. Uh, the contest ended uh, Friday. Um, not, not sure who has won yet by the, t- by the time this has re- been recorded. I'm going to uh, go vote for Longwood Gardens. Hmm. The fabulous Fox Theater in St. Louis. <laughs> See, I think this is very valuable information because you can't underestimate the value of a good bathroom. This is true. You know, I, I still think it's weird that, they, that, that there are people with time for this. I mean, it's There's like, people is it... with time for everything. Yeah, this is true. There are people that there are people with time to record their own podcasts. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> he said. Uh, yes, uh, but uh, but yeah. So as of as of this recording, we recorded on Sunday. Um, we personally don't know why this. <laughs> Go vote for your favorite toilet. Yeah, but well, we can't now because voting is closed. No, no, it's not that the contest is closed. You can still go and vote. Oh, okay. So sweet. Go vote. And they do have that there, uh, bestrestroom.com. Uh, if you want to go and check that out there, we can get the results there. Uh, I'm if... totally going to email my parents and let them know about this 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 uh, shocking development. Yes. You know, and, and there's the one in Chicago. I need to, I need... They have a membership to Longwood Gardens, so they can like go any time of the year. and They get a discount off all the shows that are there. Oh, sweet. <laughs> this turned into a commercial for Longwood Gardens. <laughs> Longwood Gardens. Uh, next one is out of uh, Saudi Arabia. Oh, out of uh, Riyadh. Riyadh, I guess is how you pronounce it. I've never had it. Pronounced I think before, it's Ri- Riyadh. Riyadh. Riyadh, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Well, anyway, Twitter is nothing more than a source of lies and evil. Saudi Arabia. That's actually people. true, though. <laughs> Especially lately. Uh, so according to the Saudi Arabia's top Muslim cleric. And he said in comments that sparked lively debate on Tuesday on the microblogging site. If it were used correctly, it could be of real benefit. But unfortunately, it's exploited for trivial matters. Sheikh Abdul Aziz <laughs> Al-Sheikha said... <laughs> the point's like, you get, it's true of the entire internet, that sentence right there. Yeah. Like, I feel you, dude. I do, but... <laughs> oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> oh. But yeah, why is this source of lies? Well, maybe because given, given your geographical location... And in th- what's going on around that those parts of the world, um, maybe you see it as a source of lies and evil because they expose your government's bullshit. And as we've heard, what was it? Egypt, I think. Either Egypt, Turkey, maybe both. I don't know. They no, don't Tur- like it. No, Turkey. Turkey's okay. Oh, if Turkey's okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so I guess. Yeah, Turkey was. They sent. They sent some fighters into. I think uh, they into to fight against ISIS. Okay. The Turks did, but they're not really like involved. Okay, okay, but uh, but I remember like what was it a year or two ago? Where I, th- I want to say it was Egypt that just wanted to have like a social media blackout or whatever because everybody was exposing their government's bullshit. Yeah, it was like during one of the the, the protest seasons. They they just shut down Twitter for like a few hours. Yeah, it's like yeah, that's that's probably why you're you're saying that the source of lies and evil. Yeah, yeah, because you know nothing nothing you know we don't want to be criticized. Uh, you know, I just whether... like how that what he said is so incredibly true about the whole entire internet. But yeah, yet everyone already knows that. Yeah. Oh, downtown Jackson. This is Jackson, Mississippi. Oh. Jackson police arrested a mom and two other men accused of having a gun in a baby stroller. 
According to an <laughs> affidavit, the gun went off, but the child was not injured. Which make this, makes this even more what the fuck, because my first thought was, okay, they were just, you know, it was like a larger gun. It was just sitting there in the stroller or whatever. Um, I was hoping, like, the baby wasn't, like, chewing on it. No, I hope not. Um, Ashanti Kid, Aaron Donaldson, and Derricka's Price appeared Monday before a Jackson judge. Kidd and Donaldson face child abuse and neglect, weapon, and reckless endangerment charges. Price is charged with unlawful possession of a firearm. Being in a baby carriage, that's going a little too far, Tony Consaldi said. Consaldi works on East College Street, College Street rather, not far from where police say they caught the group on Saturday. I guess it's a sign of the times that you see stuff like that, Consaldi said. Consaldi said rather. Uh, investigators said they got a call about a shooting near the Madison County Sheriff's Office. Police said a caller reported that the suspects dropped a gun, causing it to go off, and that a man put the weapon in a baby stroller. I think that's ridiculous, neighbor Fred Smith said. I can't believe anybody... It was like would... including, like, everybody in the town except, like, the police. <laughs> I guess. So I this guy believe... who works down the street. Yeah, I can't believe anybody would put their child at any kind of risk like that. Investigator said Kid told them the gun went off when she moved items in the buggy. Officer said they found a taser on Donaldson and a revolver on Price. Somebody's gonna, gonna get either hurt or die, Concialdi said. Uh, police said they also found a bullet hole in the baby stroller. Officer said the one-year-old was not hurt because Kid was holding the child at the time. Okay. Jesus. Okay, so the child was not in the stroller at the time. Yeah. All well, that's marginally better, I guess. Yeah. Uh, all three suspects are being held at Madison County Jail on $40,000 bond each, scheduled to return to court on November 6th. Now, it is stupid to just leave a gun right there in the baby stroller. That's stupid. And, you know, with the South being as gun happy as they are, I, I am kind of glad. I am glad that they're they're looking at these guys and they're saying, holy shit, you guys are idiots. I think that's an example of open carry that's gone a little bit too far. Yeah, and here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, I've actually been toying with with whether whether or not this is relevant, but I'm gonna put it out here on the show and let everybody else decide. Because uh, I'm not sure how relevant this would be, but all three of these people that were arrested were black. I don't know how relevant this is in in terms of how the police got involved. And how people well, the are... police got involved because the gun went off. Yeah. So I'm led to believe that if the gun hadn't gone off, there wouldn't have been any issue. Yeah. Because I don't know if, if Mississippi is a place where you can legally open carry. I think there is. I think it is either that or it's very loud. I know it's, I know it's different in every state. Yeah. Uh, I, I looked it up. I think it's supposed to be kind of, you know, a little more lax in whether, you know, whether you need a license or, or, or a permit or whatever. Um. And I don't know about unlawful possession of a firearm. I don't know what Mr. Price did to to have that. Well, maybe if it wasn't if it wasn't registered, because some states you have to have a license, or some states you have to register it. That could be it. And and the the unfortunately the article doesn't go into that detail. But uh, like I said, I I don't know if race played an issue because that was honestly that was the first thing I thought of when I saw the story I, because all I would three say of the... not because they weren't if they were just in trouble for having it in a legal open carry area then I would say okay yeah but yeah. the fact of it the matter was the whole incident happened because the gun went off yeah but yeah and and and, and who knows maybe that's my brain trying to turn it into an issue that it's not which is why I'm saying what do you guys think you you seem to say it's not a race thing Okay. I don't. I don't. I don't. I believe it doesn't sound like it. Yeah. Okay. And you know, and, and if people agree with you, then that's then that's fine. Um, me personally, like I said, it prob it's probably not. But you know, put that information out there and look at the consensus and be like, okay, so not really a race race issue. Or we could both be wrong and be like, oh shit, this is a race issue and this this is some bullshit. Um, but you know. You know, and by that I mean, you know, obviously the gun going off and public safety, yeah, sure. But it, I also wonder if it had been like three white people in the same situation, how would it have went down? You know, that's the other. Hopefully, that's the other they still would have been arrested. Yeah, I hope for so. Or all the stuff that that actually you know, they they done. Right. So, uh, so you know, consider this. Consider this, my listeners. You know, a little little bit of a little interaction here. You know. Um, you know, if you're if you're looking at this on the site or, or, or on YouTube or whatever, uh, you know, there's Thespian Talk Tumblr. Go ahead and send you know, like send in your questions or whatever. It's your chance. What do you think? Yes. Please. Please. I, I, I welcome it. 
I mean, we, we, I'm thinking probably not, but I've been wrong. So that's why I'm asking you guys. Oh, and speaking of which, I'm actually going <laughs> to, I'm actually going to jump down because uh, this particular one, even though there, there is one that about Sarah Palin, that is kind of funny because, well, it's Sarah Palin trying to be relevant. <laughs> Uh, but this other one actually does have to do with race. Uh, it's out of North Carolina. Uh, a North Carolina math teacher at Camden County High School is currently being investigated for making a horrifically racist remark to students in the classroom. The statement surfaced after being brought to the attention of Kimberly Ashcraft, a mother to one of the students. Ashcraft said that her daughter was in the, in the classroom during lunch when the teacher, Cynthia Ramsey, told another student what the terms on her but what well, the items rather on her bucket list were ashcraft ashcraft call, recalls her daughter's words she conveyed to me that mrs ramsey had indicated that if she only had 10 days to live that she would kill all black people what well well okay you know what i'm going to i'm going to be a little bit of an asshole and a little bit of a smart ass and say good luck with that because um the people you term as black people they're brown so you wouldn't be able to kill a black black people you know just just saying because they're brown. You're racist as shit, by the way. <laughs> no matter what. Like, like usually people be like, well, I would want to go on a cruise. Or, you know, I would want to climb Mount Everett. But, no, who says that? I wouldn't. This woman, apparently. Apparently. You know, I mean, if I had ten days left to live, I would organize a goddamn giant orgy. I had a feeling you were going to say that. Of course. <laughs> and everybody's taking a shot because they figured I would say that. Ah. Also in the classroom were a few other students who witnessed the remark. Ashcraft almost didn't believe her daughter at first. I was completely shocked. I asked her again, are you sure that was what was heard? Could not have imagined a teacher saying that. Oh, I can imagine a teacher saying lots of things. <clears throat> Pretty much. To make the matter even more serious, Ramsey is not just a teacher. She's the head of the math department. Ashcraft said, I conveyed to my daughter that this is a very serious allegation and I need to confirmation that this did happen. As a parent, I felt compelled to come forward and tell somebody because this was not only, in my opinion, a direct threat to the black children in the school, but also black people in the community. Okay. 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 I, I do want to have a little bit of you know, a clarification, a little, little bit of thing here. If she had 10 days left to live, she would kill all black people. That That is the thing. That is the... The, the, the thing there. So you make sure she always thinks she has 11. <laughs> that way she doesn't go around killing all black people. And and even then, she she might say that, but... I mean, I've had mean math teachers, but... Yeah, she might say that. I, I, I'm going to, you know, again, I go back to where I say, yes, what she is saying there, racist as fuck. However, I don't think she would do it. Even if she thought she only had we 10 hope days not. to live. I honestly don't think she would, because I, I think she is not as heartless as she comes across. That being said, if it's, it's you know that being said, yeah, you you question her, you look at her for the racist remarks thing, and if it turns out that she's just spewing bullshit or whatever, however racist it is, then I I don't think it would be that much of a danger, not a physical danger. I would probably take the proper precautions anyway because hey i've been wrong i think she probably doesn't need to be around children is what i yeah. would say I, that can work too uh oh, but a direct threat at this point uh maybe not i don't know again i could be wrong <laughs> yeah but in, like these days you don't want to take a chance you know yeah and that's understandable i i do understand that um, the, upon hearing of the incident, the school suspended Ramsey without pay. However, she was back in the classroom just a few days later. Ashcraft said, I was very disappointed to hear that she was back in the classroom so soon. Melvin Hawkins, the school superintendent, released this statement. At this point, our main concern is to investigate this incident thoroughly and collect the facts. This is a personal issue, and it is confidential until resolved. We are following protocol in this investigation, and student and school employee investigations are confidential. County Sheriff has left, evident, left the evidence with the district attorney. We'll decide if Ramsey is to face criminal charges. The school board is holding a discussion on Ramsey's case November 13th. Excuse me. Yeah. Okay, criminal charges for this. Uh, making terroristic threats. Yeah, I, I, I can see where that can come in. But again, that goes back to... Eh, that, that, that goes back to this whole gobbledygook you know, um, um, rubber 
band ball thing of just you know where 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 does it where does the line get drawn because i can see somebody just like spewing out bullshit not really meaning to carry through with it well you do have but freedom of speech hand, but you don't yeah. have freedom from consequences right like if you say you know i am going to murder someone and something happens because of that like I don't know, they buy a gun or something. Things have outcome. Things have consequences, mm -hmm. you know? Like, so you can be charged with this stuff. <laughs> Technically, I don't know if it's making a terroristic threat. Um, it depends on if there's, like, any local laws she may have violated. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, but again, uh, to kind of just compound everything with this particular news story, while I personally think she probably wouldn't go through with it, I can understand. In fact, I'll even encourage you know being on the safe side. You just kind of, you know, yeah, keep her away from the kids, especially the black kids. Um, you know, do what you need to do to make sure that those kids are safe. And she realizes, yeah, um, whether or not I would really go through with it or whatever it doesn't matter. There is a time and a place to say those kind of things, and not in and front that of time and place children. Is never. Yeah, or, or at the very least, within like company. That are also pretty much harmless. You know, it's your harmless. weekly racist meetings yeah. that obviously yeah. happen. <laughs> well, hey, you know, I mean, last time I heard there's a KKK meeting that's just down the road. Well, okay, almost literally just down the road. <laughs> but, yeah, but that's the last I heard. Uh, and it was a few years ago, so my information may be outdated. Um, yeah, welcome to Florida. Welcome to the taint. <laughs> Oh, but uh, they brought up November 13th, and uh, before we head out of here, I do want to make mention um, that I am going to be having a fundraising stream on November 13th. <laughs> yes, November 13th, at, starting at noon central time, going for 24 hours. Noon um, central there's... time? I'm helping. Yes. <laughs> there's going to be games. I'm going to be doing some gameplay and stuff, probably finish up Pikmin 2 if I'm not done with it. Pikmin uh, 2? Okay, I'm or... done now. <laughs> just some other games what have you highlights of course will end up going on youtube later uh also considering i am not a superhuman and i do not have that much mountain dew plus i also have kids running around there will have to be like video breaks so you will see videos from some of our producers on the site such as the diva lady jess uh, mikey gleason and a few others and i'm poking around and and getting some videos for getting permissions for videos for let me let me put it that way um, especially for the big eight or nine hour block where I'm going to actually be asleep. Uh, cause actually asleep. Okay. <laughs> I'm really done this time. There you go. And, and also, um, you know, besides the games that I play, you know, let's play style, I'm actually going to put together kind of a game show thing where we actually have prizes. We're going to have the raffle again. Prizes. Yes. We're going to have prizes. Yes. Uh, I know Miss Nightmare has already uh, offered uh, two, you know, two whole uh, commissions as prizes Nuts. for the raffle and everything. Uh, I'm actually getting a few Steam games that I plan to give out as prizes. Um, uh, admittedly, with budget as tight as it is, they're, they're kind of on the sale-y, you know, inexpensive side. So, you know, hopefully they'll be all right for you guys. <laughs> uh, but I, I do make sure when I do look through, they at least have the thumbs up. So so I'm, I'm going to get you games that at least somebody likes. Yeah, you know, they're not going to be total shit. Um, and and of course the games will have trailers and everything and all that. Uh, as far as the game shows themselves, well, I will probably have more details about it on the next show, where I will announce a little bit more about it. Uh, but let's just suffice it to say, people are going to be able to win a lot of prizes. Oh, oh, and before I forget, there's also a uh, DVD up for a prize a as well. DVD. Yes, because one of our producers has, has um, uh, you know, he has his own, uh, you know, he's directed and and I want to say he like filmed and directed like a movie himself, and uh, he's offering a copy of that up for a uh, for a prize. So that'd be great. Uh, so uh, anyway, with all of that out there, um, oh, also. Uh, in, in, in conjunction with the stream, there is a GoFundMe uh, uh, campaign for it uh, to basically just help and, and, and help. You know, I go through all of this and I forget what the fundraising stream is for. It's basically to help me get to MAGFest or, or some other convention within the next year. Um, reason being is, number one, I could use time away from here. And number two, it's I, I've noted that, you know, one of the things you need to do is get out there, meet people face to face. You know, talk to them, network, 
and all of that good stuff, in addition to, you know, having fun and everything. So in order to do that, I need money. Uh, so that's basically what it's for. Um, again, the, there's a GoFundMe account that I'm going to be using, you know, specifically for collecting that particular donation if people want to donate. In fact, as of the show, we've already had somebody donate. In, in oh, they are awesome. awesome. Yes, they are awesome. They, they've already, you know, they, they kicked $20 to it. The goal is 1500 and the reason why it's 1500 is just in case I have to go it all alone on my own. Just in case, um, <laughs> but I do have, but I do have an offer for a, a roommate, so I it may not have to go it completely alone. Um, but um, we'll we'll see how things go and and everything. Anyway, um, the link to that particular GoFundMe will be below if you're watching on YouTube or on the site or wherever. Uh, so you can click that if you wish to donate to that cause. It would be very much appreciated. And whatever money doesn't get used for this. For, for the trip or, or what have you, we'll probably go into either equipment upgrades, site upgrades, etc. Because because for the site, I am still eyeing that uh, top tier upgrade that gives us unlimited space. Uh, so mm -hmm. still still you know trying to reach for that goal, uh, and that money can go towards that as well. Um, anyway, uh, thank you guys for listening, and I have definitely earned my uh, motor mouth trope for this week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if we wanted to find Omega on the social media, where could we find her? Oh, good lord, absolutely everywhere. You can find me on RTP Prod, uh, on Twitter, at the Omega Geek. I have a website, OmegaGeek.com. I am on uh, YouTube, uh, Mega Geek Reviews. Um, you can also find me on the Facebook fan page, Mega Geek Reviews, and on Channel Awesome. And I do stuff for Nerdvice now and again, and just everywhere. Sweet. All at once. I have a blip page, too, just, yeah. Yes, and as for me, you can find me on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. Uh, you can find me on the social medias at gomer 21 x This is Twitter, Tumblr, uh, pretty much anywhere. That's probably how you can find me. Um, yes, you can make that connection from earlier. If you missed it, then, well, you don't know what the hell I'm talking about now, do you? <laughs> but for you savvy listeners out there, you can probably find that as well if you're curious. Um I also have a Patreon page if you like my stuff and you want to help support the show and support my productions on a more regular basis as opposed to just one-time donations through the GoFundMe for the MAGFest, then you head on over to patreon.com slash gomer 21 double X and what you get for uh, you know even just $1 per production, you get things like uh, early access to videos and podcasts. You get, you get previews of stuff that I'm working on. You get a monthly vlog that I do, which should be releasing to them in a couple of days. I actually just need to do it. Um, do it and get it up there. And if you, you know, go higher, then you get you can get things like, oh, request a review, which admittedly I'm a little behind on, but it's been things and stuff here, and I blame kids. Mm. Ah. Yes, fucking kids. <laughs> I love them, but goddamn. And if you are watching on the video versions or your or you know whatever you're listening on your iPod or whatever, and you see the wonderful title card artwork that is done by the beautiful and gorgeous and very talented Becky Hopkins, who has her own Patreon, Patreon.com/slash/BeckyHop, which also has links to her DeviantArt page, her own uh, professional web page, and, and in fact her artwork even if you look over in the lower right has links to her DeviantArt and her Tumblr. Go check her out. Look at her artwork. Give her a commission. You know, throw some money at her. She will do some artwork for you, title cards, character portraits, whatever. Uh, I don't think she does porn, so if you're looking for porn, she is not the one to look for. Everything else, yeah. And as a as, as, as something really awesome, she is an award-winning animator. So if you throw enough money at her, she will do an award-winning animation just for you, 30 seconds. But you know what? It'll be worth it, I think. So, again, that's patreon.com slash beckyhop. And hopefully by this time next week, it will be the last time I have to motor mouth through all of those. Because <laughs> we are working on new bumpers. Uh, actually, Kat's working on them. Hopefully as I speak. Um, so hopefully next week we'll be, we'll be having those new bumpers in, and it'll be great. <laughs> so I don't have to go over this every week. Oh, but I've rambled enough. We're going to get out of here. Thank you guys for listening. And until next time, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with the Omega signing off. Bye-bye. Thespian Talk is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.